Hey guys, another quick tech tip video from Vorschlag. It is May 2nd, 2018. Thanks for tuning in. Okay, we got some new toys here on the table. Uh, we've got uh, some replacement rotor rings. This is a 350 millimeter by 34. Uh, that's for Jamie Beck's ST3 car, ST2. Um, he likes to keep a, an extra set in the trailer just as a set of spares. That's always smart for any racer with a real program. So I'm going to show uh, the rotor rings are between $350 and $400 a piece. Uh, and that's that's not bad considering this is a real motorsports rotor. It's 11 pounds. That's a big old monster. And you can just reuse the hats. Whenever they sell you the rotor rings, they include new hardware and bobbins. Uh, and they make these a few different ways for, for differing amounts of float. Um, so yeah, so replacement parts, uh, they usually keep these here in the U.S. Um, these are cast in Italy. They're beautiful castings. Uh, they have a really nice uh, venting in the casting. Uh, of course, they, they include the rotor paint. We understand rotor paint is more important for checking uh, temperatures than an IR gun or a sticker. Uh, the temp stickers that they put on the calipers are more appropriate for checking the, the fluid temperatures. Um, and, and we'll check that two different ways. We'll, we'll check it, uh, obviously, with these one-time use uh, stickers. And sometimes we'll come into the pits without a cool down. And we'll use an IR gun and we'll shoot it right at the caliper, right at the rotor face. And that gives you some data of if you're in the right range. The, depending on the pad you're on, uh, they have a different coefficient of friction and they have a different operating range. So pay close attention to that. Uh, we use a lot of pads from the guys at G-Lock. Um, and, uh, and we use some pads from the guys at Power Break. Uh, they make their own pads. Their, their kits normally don't come with pads unless you specify it. Um, for this prototype kit, we're putting on... Our Mustang, uh, they sent us two different sets of pads, some PB23s and PB13s. Um, and, and they did that because they're trying to match the stock rear brakes we have, which they recommended we, we step down from an R16 to an R10. Uh, works in a different range, a little bit less grabby. Uh, they're worried about us getting into the ABS and basically you know, not utilizing the brakes fully because they're too grabby of a pad. The coefficient of friction is too, too, too high. So there, there's a lot that goes into a brake system. I kind of have a lot of pieces here to show you that. Uh, you got to run the right fluid for the temperature range that you're running, uh, and that's where these caliper temperatures will tell you, hey, do I need to be in the 600 or, or the 660? Uh, you know, and if you don't like Motul, you can use SRF. Th they're different. These two fluids are, are different uh, and have different uses. Um, the lower temp, the 600 wet or, or dry, a boiling temperature 600 degrees Fahrenheit is appropriate for like 85 90 percent of the cars out there um, and again if you do any sort of testing if you're you know pushing the limits of your your brakes these temperature strips will tell you hey I'm maxing out these these temperature strips and these go up to oh, what is this 3480 if you're maxing these out you probably need to be on 660 or SRF not only does this cost more it has a different uses um, most fluid, and I, and I sometimes get this backwards, is, is hygroscopic. It can absorb fluid and, and dissipate it throughout the system. And that's where this excels. You can put it in, and you might leave it in for a, a year. Um, and this is way better than the dot three stuff. This is, this is real, real brake fluid. Uh, when you're really pushing the limits, a really heavy car will probably move to that on this car. Uh, is this 660? Uh, depending on temps, we'll, we'll put it in with 600. But if we have to move to the more expensive 660 or, or like your SRF, uh, you have to bleed this more often because this fluid does not absorb water. It is it repels water. So if you get you know water vapor in your brake system, and it happens more and more, especially with an OEM style caliper where you have dust seals that you know, and there's areas where water can come in, uh, go into suspension, won't get mixed in with the fluid on a 660 or an SRF. So you have these little pockets of water, usually by the caliper, um, and that water will boil it at 200 degrees or so, 212, and uh, create steam. And then steam compresses and you lose pedal. Don't need to go to the higher temp fluid, the SRF or the Motul 660, until the temperatures of the caliper indicate the fluid is above 500 regularly, where you're kind of running out of the limit of the wet boiling point on this. So you know, don't just think it costs more money, it's better. It, there's more to it than that. There's, it's more complicated than that. So, you know, don't just believe, well, everyone tells me I need to run SRF, so therefore I do on my street car that I do two track events a year. That's not the appropriate, you know, fluid for that situation. So there are different fluids for different applications. Keep that in mind. Okay, so we have a big monster 
380 by 34 millimeter rotor. This is the uh, the brand new 380 millimeter that Power Rake introduced last year. And again, it's for really heavy cars, uh, very powerful cars, or both. Uh, that's a 19.3 pound rotor. Um, it is essentially the same diameter as the 15 inch brakes we put on our 2018 Mustang. But that 15 inch rotor weighed 34 friggin' pounds. So this is already a, what is that, a 14, 15 pound savings? Let me check my math. Uh, again, the caliper is. This is the uh, 6X, this is our six piston caliper. It's got this integral bridge that's part of the actual machine part now compared to their older design, which has these pins. Um, much more rigid on this newer design. That's seven and a half pounds with pads, and the pads are super thick. So we'll be losing some weight. I guess that combined is, let's call it 27 pounds. Um, and before the combined rotor and caliper, and I'll show that, uh, was 48 pounds for the the brakes we just put on the car so we're going to lose you know dozens of pounds going to this system and it's not just weight that's static it's unsprung weight it's rotating mass uh, it's important so uh, any, any it's it's mass the damper has to deal with so uh, knocking 20 plus pounds off each corner is is pretty important uh, I think that's going to be 21 pounds per corner in the front so really excited to test this they they showed up this week. Um, we were going to hopefully run them at Coda on our Mustang, but Coda is a four-hour tow away. Uh, it's not our home track. We can't just bomb out there and do a quick test. And our shop is really busy and stacked up this week with customer cars. And unfortunately, we don't have time to put this on. we got to develop a brake line for it because it's a prototype kit, do some testing before we haul down to Coda. Coda is a really important race for us. It's NASA. Uh, and, and this year, they're moving NASA Nationals to Coda. So this is kind of a, a Nationals practice. I've only run at Coda once in, in competition. I've run there a couple times for fun. Uh, so this is an important event. We really just got the 15 inch uh, performance pack brakes working on our 2018 Mustang uh, a week ago. And we tested them out at MSR Crescent. And I had one session out there and it was really frustrating. It was just jam packed with traffic. Uh, and, and nothing I could do could get a really clear lap within the window of when the RE71R tires will work. Um, we're finding out that these 200 treadwear tires that are so popular uh, in autocross and DE circles um, are pretty delicate. They're made to get up to temperature really fast, really, uh, for, you know, which is great for autocrossing when you're doing a 30 or 60 second run. They need to come up to temp quickly. On time trial, it can be challenging. Um, we've realized that our best laps are our first or second lap. So even though it's a street tire, I, I don't drive on the street. Uh, the one time we drove this car on the street on those tires, we got a flat and a blowout. Uh, so it stays in the trailer, and I treat them like Hoosier A race tires. Uh, I don't do an aggressive warm-up. I don't do a lot of squiggles and wiggles going out. I do a kind of a mild warm-up, and, and I definitely don't need to put too much heat in the, in the performance pack brakes. Um, so I, uh, I really got to hit it hard on the first or second lap. We did a, an event at Eagles Canyon Raceway on the 14-inch brakes, um, and because the brakes were so underwhelming and they had so little capacity, I had one lap to get it done. I had to do it on the first lap. And they were marginal to, at the end of that lap. So the 14 inch stuff, you can't really do any cooling. Uh, some people have proposed, hey, maybe somebody can do a non-inverted hat. And there might be something out there for the 14 inch to use, you know, this caliper. Uh, and it's, you know, it's a, it's a Brembo part. It says, uh, uh, you know, FOMO Co on it, but Brembo designed this system. And we've talked, at length now with uh, a former Ford engineer, testing engineer that worked on the S550. And he explained why this caliper for the 14 inch four piston S550 is so much bigger than this caliper. And it comes down to cost. Um, this machined, uh, you know, th this crossover tube, uh, they have done internally on that casting. And to do that, they added four pounds to the caliper just to save a few dollars. So. The bean counters always have something to do with compromises. The uh, inverted hat rotors were designed, and I'll show those again here, so that they never warp. And, and if you look at the differences in the cross section, and I'll show that here on the video, the, the traditional hat rotor, when it's a casting, has a really crazy curve to the back side of it. And uh, you know, I used to work as a casting engineer right out of college, and I understand that that makes for compromises uh, and heat stability and when they heat up sometimes they cool down in a funky way and that's how rotors warp 
And this guy, this engineer, Marco, asked me, did you ever warp the 14-inch rotors? I said, you know what? No, I never did, even as hot as we got them. I think we ran them at five or six track days. You know, they never overheated. Um, we did run the 15-inch rotor and caliper from the performance pack car on our 18 with the four-piston master cylinder and booster. And we ran it at Optima Series event and a track night in America the same week at NOLA Motorsports Park. Again, we did some pretty important testing nine hours away and it was a disaster it didn't work um, I didn't have any effective front brakes so as hard as I pressed on the pedal the fronts just weren't working the rears would get super hot and they would work for like one stop but yeah the car wouldn't stop and I was probably I was seven seconds off the pace of our S197 I should have been like three so I, I gave up a lot of seconds on the road course it totally killed us in the uh, speed stop challenge that we ran with Optima. It was a really frustrating week. It was a fun event. I had fun at both the Track Night in America and the Optima Series event, but we definitely brought a wounded car and I made it worse. I somehow took the 14-inch brakes, put the big stuff on, did brake cooling, did all this cool stuff, and forgot the one crucial piece in that hydraulic. So we fixed that now. We went out and did another test, and like I said, I had some, some traffic. I didn't run quite the same time as I did on kind of a ringer lap at the NASA March event at Crescent, but we did prove that they work. I ran something like 15, 16 laps, uh, you know, pretty hard, and the brakes never gave me any, any problems. So we can make the 15 inch brake, you know, the OEM stuff work. I'll probably get to the point where I'm overdriving those pretty quickly once I go to Hoosiers. And, and your brakes have to change depending on the performance of the rest of the car. The weight of the car matters, the horsepower of the car matters, the grip the car can make matters, the aero in the car matters. The faster the car gets, the more you have to go away from an OEM kind of solution and, a, and to a more a racy solution. So again, 21 pounds lighter per corner, that's a pretty big deal. Um, I know we'll have better wear over time. We always do with any of the power brake stuff. So these are really nicely built. I mean, they're beautiful castings, beautifully machined uh, hats. Um, and you know, that 21 pound savings per corner comes at a cost. Uh, again, we'll, we'll play with different brake pad compounds. They sent me a couple different pads, and we'll probably do it the following week. We have a local event here at MSR Crescent, our, our traditional test track, with the SCCA Club Trials uh, for Texas region, which doesn't run the Bizarro Honda Street Tire National SCCA Club uh, Time Trials rules. They run kind of a modified autocross rule set. It's, it's different, but it's working. Uh, and they have 50 plus people showing up just for time trials. So that's, it's hard to argue with the numbers. They've pretty, been pretty successful. Um, and we, like I said, we, we do some testing with those guys and had fun with them out at Eagles Canyon. Uh, but yeah, so look for this on the car in a week. Um, again, we're just so compressed on time. I gotta leave for Coda. Um, we're loading up for Coda tomorrow. And I just don't have time to get this on the car to change our, our brake backing plate to fit the new rotor setup. Uh, we, we will have a production pretty uh, brake backing plate for the S550 OEM brakes very soon. And of course, we'll make one for the power brake 380 millimeter as well. Again, 380 mm 15 inch, same size, but much lighter, much more robust, better casting, better caliper, better everything. So we'll have that available on our website pretty soon. So that's all I got for this time. Just wanted to kind of follow up on my last videos. We're getting a, a lot of feedback, a lot of views. Um, and you guys seem to appreciate it. I'll try to do more videos here in the future and I'm trying this new mic So if the sound doesn't sound great, I may have to reshoot this whole thing and uh, yeah, that's what we'll do So again, thanks for checking in guys uh, We'll see you next time